He created the heavens and the earth. He's the greatest, and he loves us so much. How would you lose if you followed God? I follow him anyway. Why did I say? All right, happy Friday. Come on now, baby. We got Chris Willingham in the office. In the office, in the house. In the house, in the studio. <laughs> yeah. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Happy Friday. Yes, happy Friday. Brian Knight, happy hey, Friday. Hey, happy Friday. Chris, John, look, that's right up your alley. I'm not follow, I'm not talking about following no preacher or no man. I follow God. I follow God. Yeah, that's right. I like, I like, how, I like when people say, I follow God. Yeah, we can learn from that. That, because that's that, that one rap song I played. I walk with God. <laughs> yeah. James McDermott on the chat board here. I'm not. I, you know, I have. You know, you've turned me on to Kanye. I'm not really a big fan, but this song just hits. Okay. Like I was listening to it last night. Like I don't know, ten times in a row. This song is fantastic. But have you seen the documentary? Nope. See, huh. you got to watch the Kanye documentary, and your opinion will completely change. Really. Huh. I've not seen the Kanye documentary. I just don't like his music style. That's the reason I don't like the guy. Not not because he's not not a good guy. Now he used to irritate me because he was so full of himself. And then mm -hmm. after his conversion experience, I was like, okay, he's he's and not yeah. because of that, but because he he changed his attitude. Yeah. Boy, his you know they were trying to put him in in uh in a mental hospital. No. His girl, his wife. Yeah. And uh, the the devil well, was trying he, to trap him. God, that's, well, that's yeah, but I think, he's, I think he's had some depression issues and things like that in the past, and that's what they were talking about was he's got some issues like that. I don't think it was because he's following. Well, hopefully no, it was because he's following God. if you watch the documentary, it <laughs> really? was all just to basically take him down really? to yeah. stop him from praising God. Ooh. Uh, yeah. That, all false. That's all fake news. Really? I'm telling you. Really? He is, look, he is, an, he is an upper echelon musician, mu musical producer, and those guys at the top, man, they're dark. The devil's in the middle of them. And I'm not saying it's Kanye, but yeah. I'm telling you, they I know people who've been there, and they don't like Christian, the word Christian. They don't like people who follow, their, not their God, because their God is Lucifer. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not saying you're wrong. Oh, no, I, 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 I just, think that's what that I there was, mm -hmm. I think there could be some, yeah. some, some depression and, and yeah. some mental things going on for sure. But yeah. I, I do think a big part of it was they were trying to just yeah. silence him. him. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I know I, I'm. I was, I'm a big American Idol fan, whatever he's watched American Oops. Idol, but long, you know, when they were doing the first American Idol series with Simon and all that, mm -hmm. there was a guy who was a worship pastor out of Fort Worth <clears> and <throat> he was good, man. He made it into the, you know, the upper rounds and all that stuff. Oh, wow. And they got to where they're doing just their singles and stuff. And they had Gene Simmons come in you know, for uh -oh. kids. And Gene Simmons is, you know, he's that upper echelon music guy Yep. and, and he's Jewish by, by birth. So that's, mm -hmm. that's why he practices. He's Jewish. Anyway, he looked at the guy and he said, man, you're great. You have a great sound. I'd produce you today, but you need to know something. At some point, very quickly, you're going to have to make a choice between your faith and the music industry because you can't have both. Yeah. You're going to have to choose between one of the two. Yeah. And he asked him, he said, which one? He's like, man, I have to choose my faith. He goes, I respect you for that, and I'm going to tell you you need to get out now. Wow. He said that live? Yeah, he said it live. It was on the show. I was like, whoa. whoa. Yeah, you know, he, Gene Simmons came out with that TV show, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He says, I just don't want you to expect something different yeah. because your faith is not going to survive in this industry. Yeah. And so it was like, well, look at, like, you know, somebody like Katy Perry. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking yeah. of that, you know, where she yeah. grew up, you know, as a Christian singing in the church. I mean, she literally joked John and said, I made a deal with the devil. Yeah. No, yeah. she, she completely oh, yeah. sold out for the world. I don't know if that's a joke or not, but Egypt. Yeah. Uh, no, it's yeah. definitely not. You yeah, know, she's, she's kicked mm -hmm. people off the show for singing Christian songs. Yeah. I stopped watching because of that a few years ago. Yeah. She told some lady, she's like, you're singing about God. We told you not to. Yeah. You got to wow. stick to pop. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yeah. What's, what's wrong? And her dad was a worship pastor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really a worship pastor. Because the, Satan is still the, the Lord, the God of the airways and he yeah. wants to rule. Yep. And so he does it in any way he can. Yeah. You know, God gives him a reign. He's got, he's got this earth just for a little while longer. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point you make, Brian. And, yeah. and but there's the Christian music mm -hmm. scene lane yeah. that you could always take. That it seems to be yeah. pretty big right now. I mean, they have their own award it shows, is. their own channels. I mean, it is. I like the ones who can cross over into. Of course, you know. So when I grew up in the in the '80s 
Christian music was awful. It was just, it sucked. Mm. Okay, let's just be honest. <laughs> like, you couldn't make you me listen cussed. to it. You're going to hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I, blasphemy. Yeah, it was, it was crummy. I just tore my shirt. You get like yeah. a Michael W. Smith on the scene, Amy Grant, who, you know, it's old school now, but they changed the oh, yeah. realm of Christian music. They made it more pop and and took hit after hit after hit for that. I mean, got mm. beat down by the Christian community for it. Mm-hmm. But what they did was they pulled a lot of people into that music who would never right. listen to it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and that's where the Christian it. industry comes it. from. Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a great documentary. I think it's on Netflix about about that whole era from the 70s on mm. up. You know, Billy Graham was a big part of that, believe it or not. I've mm. gained a lot of respect for him. Yeah. Because he was like, you know, you got to recognize mm. that if you want these young people, you got to bring their music. And bring their music into the kingdom. I see. And he pushed for that when other people said no. Yeah. Oh, I was really impressed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny. They for a while there. Gosh, I don't know how. When it was the sixties, seventies, eighties. Yeah. Playing loud music, dancing. That was that was awful. Sinful. You know. Yeah. You play the wrong instrument, electric guitar. Oh my God, that's a sin. Yeah. You of course, you know David in the in the uh, in the Psalms and 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 so on says, line. you know, play the stringed instruments. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So it's so it's so silly. Like yeah. we were talking earlier, do you think God puts limits on how we can express our love for Him? No. Yeah. Absolutely not. You know, crank it up, just like Michael Jackson in or Michael J. Fox in uh, the first uh, Back to the Future when he puts that guitar into that giant yeah. amplifier and oh. blows it up. That's the best thing ever. That's a <laughs> great scene. Well, you know, I remember hearing messages like, you know, I talk about because Satan w- led worship and stuff like that. I mean, like as Lucifer, his, his job was to lead worship to the Lord. So he was, he was like a, an instrument. His body was made like an instrument for mm. praise. Right. Yeah. And so they always used to joke. You got to be careful about the, well, it is a joke, but it's true. Music is powerful. It's mm. powerful stuff. And that's why I think that, that the enemy is invested in using music to turn people's hearts because music can turn your heart fast. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I think there's two things. I think there's music and comedy. That can change people's minds faster. Yeah, oh yeah, else. absolutely. And so that's where we have to be careful. Yeah, and that's and that's why I don't listen to the music I listened to when I was younger. Yeah, you know, I, I can't because it, it will morph my mind. Yeah, it will put yeah. me in a mindset. It'll, yeah. it'll take me down a lane I don't want to go down. Yeah. yeah, Do I do I respect guys like you know Tupac Shakur? Yeah, yeah. Guys I listened to back in the day, like absolutely. Yeah. But I can't listen to Tupac right now. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm. Yeah. I follow God. Yeah. Not saying he didn't. Yeah, I'm not saying I'm not judging Tupac. I'm just sure. saying that music mm-hmm. is not good for my mind. Right, right. You know. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand. I mean, I mean, I love ACDC and Def Leppard yeah. and Rush and all that stuff. That that's kind of my when I was growing up. That Rush. Time. Yeah, but, but I have to be careful about how much I listen to it. You know, yeah. I mean, I got in the country scene for a long time, and you got to be careful mm-hmm. even with country music because yeah. there's some stuff in there that'll well, take you down you a dark be, hole. <laughs> uh, careful with Christian music. Yeah, I mean, there's that one right. huge song a few years ago. That has like five billion downloads and it's called Reckless Love. Yeah. yeah. I, no. Yeah. I, I refuse to listen to that. I disagree with that song wholeheartedly. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Reckless love. God's not reckless. Yeah. It, yeah. Just, that, don't, that just don't sing that one word. It's the great song. I know. It's, I used to, I just I did that when we would have you know worship music for our, our student ministry. I would go through and look at the, all the new stuff and say, let's like there was a, a Michael W. Smith song called I think it was called The Robe. Uh, help me out on this, Brian. Where it said, um, uh, basically, he was thinking of you on the cross. What's what's the words to that, Brian? Do you remember this? Uh, uh, the robe. He did every the robe. I think it's called the robe. Hmm. Um, basically, everything he did on the cross, he was thinking of you, hmm. right? And I was like, that's a great thought. It's just not theologically accurate. He yeah. did. He went to the cross because his father told him to go to the cross, and he was obedient to his father because he loved the father. Mm. Now, we are the beneficiaries of that because right. it saved our souls, right? Right. So I can understand what he's trying to say, but but Jesus was not was not doing it for me. He was doing it for his father, mm. who it was a blessing to me. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But, but do you think it could be both? No, I, I, he, well, yeah, I mean, he Jesus obviously died came to save father, us. But he, he also did it for yeah. us. But, but the way the song goes, it's like all he all was on his mind was you. And it was like, no, I think his father's glory was on his mind, oh, wow. and we're the beneficiaries of that. So when we worship God, Interesting. we're the beneficiaries of all that stuff. Yeah, you know. And so, yeah, I just had a problem with the song. The way the the way that it's phrased made it sound like he only went to the cross because he was thinking of you. That's all he was on his mind. I was like, yeah, I think with Christian think music, so. you know, it, just like a pastor, just yeah. like a, a podcast like this, yeah, you you want it to be, you demand it to be biblical, yeah, because we believe the Bible, right? Yeah. Like we. 
we believe every word of the Bible, God's right. breathed word. So yeah. when you get a song like, let's say, Reckless Love again, it's like, where in the Bible is God reckless? Right. Can you imagine right. walking up to God in heaven and being like, hi, God, um, you know, besides you being reckless, I really love you. Yeah, right. Like, right. what? Yeah. Oh, the song was called Above All. That's what it was. <laughs> above All Kings of All Thrones. Yeah. He thought of, of all honor. I love the song. It's a great song. But I above, see. he thought of me above all. I was like, no, no. he didn't think of you above God as far, above the right. kingdom. He didn't yeah. think of you above He that. thought Yahweh was He first. was. Yeah, he loves you. Right. And he was it, dying and for you. And because of Yahweh, yes. he loves you. That's right. That's right. Right. Interesting. So, he, well, it didn't take anything away from the from the believer. Right. But he didn't well, think it, of me above all. And I know we're kind of going tit for tat on our yeah. song here. Right. But yeah, going, going back to reckless love, yeah, too, again, where is, where is God reckless in the Bible? You show me where God is reckless in the yeah. Bible. See, yeah. it's not biblical. It's false mm -hmm. teaching. So then no, you get no. some young kid, and who knows? Maybe that song made him go to church, and he got sure. saved. So I'm like, look, okay, like yeah. take it easy on me here. I'm right. Maybe I'm being like overly, you know, passionate here, but it, it's just it, it could swing the other way though. Yeah. Where some kid at 20 years old is like, wow, God's reckless. Yeah. Right. Why? Right. So I can do that. I can. Yeah. I could be reckless. Yeah. So as to long do, as I'm do the reckless thing is to be like God. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not biblical. No, I agree with you. I think that's a great point. Yeah. It really is a good point. Yeah. Cause you think about it. Cause I, I mean, you hear people in the realms that I've traveled in with theologians, you get theologians who'll say, look like the flood, like that was mm -hmm. a reckless act because God was got like, mad at men and he just, I'm like, killing them. You know, like they do, God do a temper, temper tantrum, you know? Right. And, and that's no, not true. That's not true. It's, it's not true precise. at all. It's precise. It's precise. It's, it's planned. Yes. It's, it's, it's just. It's perfect. Yes. It's just. Yes. Uh, what is what is the definition of reckless? Can we look that up? I know Brian's quick on the keyboard. Yeah. He's, he's, he's already, like he's like Joe Rogan. He's already he's there. Like right hand man. It, it, yeah, I, I did. It just means out of control out of without control. thinking. There you go. Yeah. God is not out of control. <laughs> In fact, the definition of his character is he is in control. <laughs> that's like that's like a defining Thank characteristic you. of God. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to go down this yeah. route. No, but you're right. I mean, and, and like that, I like I look at Michael Smith's song. I was talking about and go. I see what he's saying, and I'm wholeheartedly in on what he's saying. Yeah. But the the verbiage was wrong. Like yours is is God's love um, beyond our understanding in that sense. There you go. Is it is it is it like crazy to us that he would love an enemy? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's what he's trying to describe right. in that song. That which, makes sense. You know, it just it goes against the every possible logical norm, right? Because it's God's logic, not mine. Yeah, but it's not reckless. It's it's right. very. I, I I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Brian, you agree? Brian kind of likes that song, so he struggles. Oh, I like the song. Too. I'm with you 100. percent The word reckless on that song is the worst word they could have used. The song is super. Except yeah. for the word reckless. Okay, so like the other lyrics and stuff are yeah. good. Okay. Oh, yeah, right. yeah. No, okay. the, like I said, the heart of, like I said, even Michael right. Smith's song, is, okay. the heart of that song is is in the right place. Yeah, even above all, he thought about me. I mean, you could say, yeah, like the cross is going, dying and being raised from the dead is only for Christians. I mean, he, okay. he wouldn't do it for himself, yes. technically. Yes. But, you know, I agree. You're, you're right. It, it, it was glory to God also. Yeah. But it's still a great song. It is. It's just, Again, don't take anything away from the song. Yeah. You know? But there's you know, it is okay. I totally believe that we should say, look, this these this song, these lyrics, they're they're fine and all, except they're not a hundred percent true. And we can still sing them and praise and worship God, but you have to know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that's sometimes I guess if you want to be super strict, but yeah. Even reckless. Like you don't have to sing reckless. Like yeah, that's you and yeah. you don't even have to sing the song. But if you're in church and reckless love comes up as number one or two or three or four, five or six, whatever you're singing, don't just turn off, right? right. I'm not saying this to you, John, but anybody in yeah. a song you don't like comes up, just worship and praise God in that moment yeah. around that those those words. I would go to the bathroom. See, that's what I I, I actually will, will worship with the song right. the parts I can agree on. Yeah. I'd go to the bathroom. <laughs> I don't that's know okay. I with my hands up singing yeah. reckless love. I just I'm sorry. Yeah. Call me, call me being a little. But you could also say love the overwhelming life. love of God uh, instead of reckless love of God. Yeah. yeah. Because that's you right. know what? The overwhelming love of God is everything that song says it is. I'm sing that part. I'm just like, I'm not going to sing that part because I don't believe it. That's okay. <laughs> well, because I mean, we're singing it to God. And here's another thing. What if that song, Meg makes a good point. What if that song, Reckless Love, it, sh it, it gets somebody to get on their knees and b bow before the Lord Jesus and change their heart and get born again right there. I, look, I'm laying my sword down. You guys have great points. Yeah, I'm just saying I, that if that song came on in church, yeah. personally, I understand. 
I would use the yeah. restroom. I would leave. I'd go get some more coffee. <laughs> yeah. I'd use the restroom and I'd wait for that song to be. I over. totally understand though. But I, I, I'll, I'll actually join you, John, on one part, which is let's say that that did happen, what you described, Brian. I, I still have a problem with that because Me if leaving? they're understanding, well, if, if somebody comes to Jesus because of that song, hey, that's great. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah. But if they come to it because of that understanding, they're understanding a wrongness about God. So we can well, say, hey, God accepts you in your homosexuality, come to God, and they get saved. Mm-hmm. But they're wrong about what God accepts from them. Now, is yeah. they're wrong in their salvation? I don't believe, and so don't hear me say that. I'm not saying it. Again. Well, of course, but, but exactly. But here's the thing: you don't come to the Lord knowing all understanding. True, no, too. you know, no, same thing with you. You know, you're still a smoker, a drinker. You get high, you homosexual, prostitute, whatever. But you come there, and all of a sudden, boom! You see the light after you, you're born again. He starts revealing himself to you mm-hmm. deeper and deeper. So I. I that person's part, I completely understand that and agree with you. But if, if we were doing that knowingly, yeah, you know what I mean? That's what I would disagree with. If we're advertising that knowingly and somebody gets saved because of that, we're actually doing a disservice to them. But yeah. if they just come to it, like they hear the song come to it, I have no problem with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, that you don't have to know every, you don't have to know hardly anything to be saved. <laughs> no kidding. You know? I mean, God makes it easy. <laughs> Which which kind of brings you to another question we shouldn't go down the path. Uh-huh. <laughs> churches need to teach the people. Oh, man, I'm 100% on that. He said churches need to teach the people. That's where we... We, There's such a, 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 a hole there, I think, in yeah. how people are taught and the availability of, of the Word of God. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Well, you know what? Let's just do this really quick to break out. Yeah. Let's just... There have we go. Chasing cars, have you chasing numbers? We didn't know what the billboard was when we was first making music back in Chicago. Back when I was 14 and my mama crib, we didn't know what the numbers was. Now I'd be all over the internet like, oh, you only sold this much. The power of God cannot be calculated by a number by a first week sale. By- Here we go. Yeah, we can agree on that one. Oh, man. Wholeheartedly. Perfect. Wholeheartedly on that. Well, let's pray it in. We are on Ezra, chapter 8, New Living Translation. Yeah. And uh, I love Ezra, by the way. Yeah. Uh, and just to put a bow on our last conversation, I'm right. You guys are both wrong. Yeah. So here we go. We're going to continue. Yeah. And, and just to think also, none of these topics are like where we run away from each other. These are just conversations within the family. That's exactly right. Yeah. And even little disagreements don't matter. I right. mean, it's, 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 it's points of view, right? No, no, no. I'm going to create the first church of Brian in San Antonio because right. <laughs> yeah. I believe my way. That's right. And yeah. And we, we, we open with reckless love every Sunday. That's right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think I think it's the heart again, you know, like yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's the heart, you know. Yeah. So if you're singing that song cuz you it love is. Jesus and yeah, oh, you, you don't really care about the word reckless yep. and yep. then fine. But if you're I do think if you're singing that song and you think that God is reckless and you have a weird point of view with that, I yeah. think I don't know. Like it's just yeah, whatever. But I, I like yeah. our discussions. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And again, uh, hey, if you like those songs, good. I, I again, the song that I talked about that I don't like the verbiage in. I love the song. I think yeah. the song is awesome. Michael W. Smith killed it with yeah. that song. But um, yeah. Well, I love Ezra. Yes. Yeah, same. He, a prophet. He's he a is a leader. He's a quarterback. Mm-hmm. He is uh, strong willed. Uh, God is working through him. He's getting along really well with the Persian king. Yeah. Um, yeah. He just seems like a very gentle but powerful, soft spoken mm-hmm. man. Yeah. You know, I you know we met him yesterday in chapter seven, mm-hmm. and um, it's been really good to get to know Ezra. And that's what's so fun about going cover to cover with you guys is yeah. I get just to meet, um, uh, and we all do, uh-huh. uh, even if you've met him before, kind of re meet all of these people. Uh-huh. It's fun. Yeah. Oh, it's it's great. It's yeah. great. Yeah. Very cool. If I had a MySpace, I would add Ezra to one of my boxes. <laughs> my top five or what? Top three? Oh, it would go. <laughs> Yahweh and Jesus would share a box because they're, well, the they're the same. So they would be like half. Well, don't forget the Holy Spirit. Half, oh, yeah. yeah it'd be a three, Spirit. three box. Spirit, <laughs> Jesus, right. God. I don't, Jesus, much God. I don't know what I would put for the picture of God. Probably just like perfection. <laughs> next, I don't know. But that, you know, but uh, the next would probably be Jehovah. King David. Yeah. King David would be my second box. Yahweh. <laughs> Who would be your second box? Second box? On MySpace if for Bible oh, people. For MySpace. Gosh. Didn't uh, Pastor Brett said King David. Yeah, David. I mean, certainly David ranks up there. I don't know. I'm, I'm... Paul, my guy. 
Paul's a good guy. See, that's another. See, one I, I don't know. I haven't Paul. met Paul yet. Yeah, Paul's great. Isaiah is pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I don't know who would be my next favorite. I know the one that I identify with the most, which is not the best, <laughs> and that's Jonah. <laughs> so mm. he wouldn't be like one of my favorites. Uh, oh, cynical Chris. Identify with Jonah because okay, okay. I feel like I've been Jonah at times. Right. Yeah, because there's been times when God's doing a great work and. I'm too worried about me and what I want. Mm. And Chris is looking at his neighbors. Burn them down, Lord. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I knew you were going to save them. <laughs> How I'm dare you? Send them all to hell. What about you, Brian? MySpace Jonah's second jerk, but... second box. Who would you have in there? Man, it's uh, a good question. Pro- yeah. You know, I would. I would. Question. I would probably. My my thought would be. I've got mine. It, it's 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 it's, a, it's either. Two and three would be Moses and Abraham. Those are oh, good ones. Moses wow. is a really Moses. good one. Moses, Moses saw a lot, man. He 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 communed with God more than I think anyone. Yeah, yeah, and, more than David. Yeah. yeah, way more than David. Okay, but, I mean Moses went to heaven three times for thirty days. That's a good one. Yeah, you know that's a long time. I mean, he's got Moses is in everyone's top five. Come on, and God buried Moses. Yeah, he did. We don't even know where he's been. Mm. He's been there yet. No think, idea where he's been. think of all the things Moses faced uh, Egypt and threw down, had the miracles in his hand and his robe, yeah. saw everything happen, proclaimed uh, d- destruction and, and victory, and just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, May, good morning. I love how Meg's on the chat board here. She's, I don't know, but you know, Noah saw a whole lot, though, during the. Yeah. All yeah. that evil. He saw all those Nephilim and the Minotaurs. Everything. Shoot. Yeah. See, I think my number two would probably have to be the Apostle John. Yeah. Mm. I love mm-hmm. John's heart. I love his viewpoint. He 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 lives to be old enough to have a viewpoint. <laughs> you know, that's mm, the yeah, first because awesome. none of the rest of them do. They all die younger. Mm-hmm. You know. But I I love John's heart. Um, I, I I might have to do um, not in the second box. I think King David and, and Moses would be second, third, yeah. like you guys are saying. But top five, fourth, and fifth, I'd probably have to do Joseph. For four, Joseph, Old Testament Joseph, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good so, one because he took the reins of Moses. That's a good one, and uh, you know, oh, yeah. no, jo- oh, you're talking about Joshua, 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 Joshua. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry, Joseph is before yes, he took uh, the Joshua reins, so after Moses, Joshua, and, uh, yeah, Joshua was good too. Maybe not fifth, but top ten, I'd put first Pharaoh in there. Pharaoh, one of the pharaohs, the, first the Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Oh, the Pharaoh of Joseph, mm-hmm. if he made it. You know, I, I I still think probably Paul would be number one. It's number two yeah, for me. Paul. Paul the Apostle. Yeah. Yeah, I think I do John, but I, th- I think Paul is certainly a... And maybe Ringo. I mean, I don't know who... You know. Yeah, yeah. He's good, too. Good <laughs> yeah, drummer. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, yeah, I think I think Paul's a great one. All of them. Yeah. yeah. How I mean, do you even fit? Peter, you know? I mean, again, he's he's one you can identify with. Like... Yeah. What about Samson? No one's mentioned Samson. Yeah, I don't know. He's, he's fine. Kind of <laughs> he was kind of feisty. But he's a good kid. There are people that I would identify with. I wouldn't put in that second box. I, I don't identify like, with Samson. Like, Let's see. Yeah. I, I look. I, I I look at it like I hear Samson. I see Samson, but I want to hear from Paul. Yeah. I want to I, talk to Paul. Samson's right. more. See, of that's a, why I'm with John. I want to talk more to of guy. a action, brutal with the hands. Yeah. Kind he's of like a hands-on a, guy. He's kind of a, he, you know who he was. Hmm. He, he reminds me of somebody. Well, I don't want to name names. He he he's a, kind of a loner. Mm-hmm. He was kind of a loner. He didn't really run with a crew. It wasn't like right. David and Jonathan. It he wasn't was like Joseph aside. and Moses. He wasn't. Yeah, he I just did his own thing. Yeah, yeah he went Crazy. to Philistia by himself. Right. <laughs> it's kind of like leave me alone. Right. I'm, I'm super strong. I'm super blessed. Yeah. I'm gonna. He's pretty prideful. He kind of sure. reminds me like a pro athlete, like an NFL yeah, he's football a jock. player. That yeah. he's, signed a, like, d- he's like Donnie. I'll say it. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Was hey, I'll say it. What's up, Donnie? I was thinking of Donnie Shankle, just yeah. strong, long hair, you know, just yeah. a man of strength, a man of God, but very kind of just to himself. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah, I, but, well, but, uh, you know, I think Donnie was, you know, I think Donnie's wiser than Samson. <laughs> I'll say yeah. that. Yeah. Well, the be? spirit of God's inside Donnie. This is turning into a yeah. Joe Rogan podcast. We're going to be here for four yeah, hours. Right. Yeah. Right. So I took this mushroom the other day. Yeah. Need some cigars. Yeah. We're going to get <laughs> Oh, you here? You want one? I get my mm-hmm. pipe. I got a pipe. I oh really? Hey, nice man. Look at these that. are these are actually Cubans. I got them from Mexico. I actually had a Cuban a couple of years ago, and I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> I'm not a big cigar guy. Hey, you're allowed to smoke cigars if you are a Calvinist. That's it, though. 
Oh, is that it? Okay. That's it. Look at that. James no, more Gunn. reform. That's close enough. That's close enough. <laughs> wow. Look. Okay. So Meg said, and and I've obviously these the first boxes, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. So Ruth, second oh. second box, Meg says Ruth and Moses. Yeah, that's good. For second and third box. Mm -hmm. Forgot about Ruth. I no. feel bad right now. James McDermott says Moses, Hezekiah, and David. Hezekiah. Hezekiah yeah. and David. Yeah. King Hezekiah. Oh, wait till you get to Daniel. That's one you wouldn't mind having in the second box. That is true, Daniel. Dude, I'm man. getting called out. He goes, what about Caleb? I was hey, thinking about Caleb. Daniel's the one who, sit, who looks in the face of the king yeah. and says, go ahead, put me in that lion's den. God will yeah. shut their mouths. Yeah. Yeah, put me in the lion's den. Yeah. Or his friends, you know? They're like, Shadrach, hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You're gonna, shutting my, my bungalow? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Caleb just didn't get enough ink for me to be in, like, put him in a top yeah. five box. Yeah, he's right there beside Joshua, but he doesn't he yeah, get the same he's ink. Like, I mean, God yeah. loved him, and he loved Caleb. I mean, he yeah. stayed faithful for t 20 years in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. He did. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. why he's, he's him and Joshua. Him. Yeah, him and Joshua. That's right. The only two that made it past 20 years old. Yep. Everybody only else two. croaked. God said, besides Joshua and Caleb. Yeah. Y'all are done. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, that's right. like, yes, I'm so glad I said numbers 13. That's 30. right. I know. <laughs> I know. All right. I'm so glad I spoke up when everybody was being quiet. So now everybody's rushing out to start their MySpace page. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> oh, that's God. Funny. MySpace is going to have a resurgence. Chris, you want to pray it in? Sure. Yeah. Try to tone it down to that. <laughs> yeah. We'll get focused in here, yeah. everybody. Here we go. Oh, Lord. Thank you for laughter. Thank you for uh, for human, Lord. We know that we didn't create it. You did. Uh, we even see that in Scripture in a lot of places. But, Father, we thank you that we can laugh together, that we can uh, joke a little bit. But actually, Lord, that we can honor and look up to people that you've placed in Scripture, mm. that you give us good examples, and, and even examples not to follow, God, that you've placed them in your book so that we could know them and could understand them and could either choose to follow their example or not. But Father, we we ultimately want to follow Jesus' example, mm. um, and uh, and and Lord to to place Him at the pinnacle mm. of yep. uh, of our vision, capital H, uh, to 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 look to Him uh, for all things and realize these other people would say the same thing mm. if they were making their MySpace page. They would say, first box. Jesus. 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 Yeah. And so mm. uh, we want to we want to acknowledge that, Lord, and thank you uh, for for the blessing of of the Savior, of the Messiah. And uh, and Father, we just pray as we read your word, as we open it and go through it, that you would make us mindful that you have put everything for a purpose here mm. and uh, to, to open our eyes to to see the purpose. Uh, and it, Lord, not to discover new things. We're not discovering new things, but we are being illuminated by your word. And that's what we pray for mm. this morning as we read it in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Holy smoke and biscuit. We forget we forgot about Adam. Got good stuff. Adam. Yeah, Adam's good. I mean, yeah. he walked with God for days and weeks and months. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I wish we knew how long he was there. But yeah. he was there long enough. Gosh, that was an amazing prayer, by the way. Thanks, man. That was, like I said, you got that, good good content you just look at god <laughs> that was beautiful Amen. She, morning sherry's on here and and she's uh hopefully been uh god is looking after sherry as she's resting right. from surgery she's, yeah gosh i watched john yeah, they, speaking, talking about hospitals uh i watched john q last night with denzel oh yeah, yeah. me Denzel's and my wife awesome. did, like, we just really we're kind of showless right now uh-huh and so we were flipping through i think it was netflix or hulu or something yeah. and, and then boom john q came up and i'm like yeah. i looked at babe i go babe you want to do this she's like all right yeah. And I don't know what it was. Like I've seen John Q a few times, yeah. but I don't think I've seen John Q since Lincoln has been born. Oh, so you've seen him as a dad. Now oh, I'm seeing different. him as a dad. And different. we had to shut it off three different times yeah. to go yep. into the bathroom to wipe the tears off our yeah. face. Yeah. And then and then go back in and replay again. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not telling you about tear I wasn't teary eyed. Yeah. We were literally bawling. Oh yeah. Yeah. Why yeah. why uh I've never seen it. Oh, you need to watch Dude. it. Well, first of all, it's it's Denzel. I mean, you're not going to get better than Denzel Washington. A warning, Brian. Yeah, it is really tough to watch, man. Because as a as a non parent, you can identify with him and go, "Man, I see that. I'd do that. I think." Yeah. But as a parent, you're like, "Give me the gun. I'm there. I, I'm I'm already there. I want to. Yeah. Don't don't, don't mess it up for. Me. But but you're, you're like, I'm with you, man. I I'd, I'd do exactly the same thing in all aspects. Yes, exactly. And all even the end scene where he Absolutely. makes that decision. Hey. What, Stuff. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Brian. No spoilers. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 
Yeah, it's crazy. You should have just brought the tissue out there with you, John. <laughs> well, it's in our our big TV's in our room. Yeah. So we were already like in bed, just relaxing. Yeah. And, uh, and Denzel, Denzel's, Denzel's the best. He is the man. I mean, he's the man. I always say it goes Leo Denzel for me, but like the oh, older see, I get, Denzel. I feel like it's Denzel Leo. No, I've always been Denzel before Leo. Yeah, absolutely. Like I think Denzel's the greatest actor <clears throat> to ever live. He's he's a phenomenal actor. Yeah. But I mean, from what everybody says, he's like even first, better, first like, one. Loves Yahweh. Yeah. He loves Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. He loves Jesus. Yep. He's one of those guys who believes in, hey, look, you, you pray to God, you do all you can do, you you work hard. Yeah. And and that's what you do. You don't, you know, don't complain about everything around you. You know. So you would have done what Denzel want at the end. Of- <clears throat> yeah. Sorry, Brian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Easy. Easy. Yes. I mean, I don't know. And do you think God okay, this maybe we should just talk about this after Brian sees yeah. it. But do you think God would judge you? That's yeah, maybe you should, because now I know what happened. He probably shot himself or something. No, Brian, we're not saying. Uh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. He, yeah, we'll he killed on. the he killed the bad guy. Uh, we're gonna move on. <laughs> and, uh, I'm just, I, but I'm saying I probably would have done. I think Jesus would get it. I think he'd be fine with it. All right, suicide is never an option. Hmm. <laughs> I haven't even seen it. I just know. I, I feel it. I feel it. Gonna I feel the answer happen. from y'all. No one's gonna have it. Right, I think yet. anybody you know that's cute might disagree with you. I'm All right. right, so yeah, you know, I'm telling you. Yeah. Anyway, but it's not the it's not like you can't get into heaven. It's it's a, so I was right. Sa- not, look, sacrificing yourself for your kids is fine. Stop googling it, Brian. I'm not. Yes, you are. <laughs> no, I just know. I could tell. There's only one or two situations in life that are difficult to make. <laughs> I mean, so you you so pinpoint them down. You, uh, deductive reasoning. I have an uncle. He says suicide is the unforgivable sin. I'm like, oh, come on, bro. It's not, that's that's what not what scripture says. I yeah. know. He's <laughs> he, 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 he uses Judas as the example. Like, yeah. is Judas committed suicide? Yeah, it's all good. All right, Ezra eight. Let's yeah. read. Yeah, I am gonna watch it though. Oh. Yeah, yeah, watch definitely it watch it. Watch it tonight. We'll talk more about it. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Right. Chris, pray. Did you want to start? Brian? Sure, I will. Sure, sure will. And and then Denzel kills himself to save his son. Okay, just kidding. All right, <laughs> chapter eight, verse one. I've never seen it. I don't. I, I'm guessing. Watch it tonight, and then on tomorrow's study, we'll talk about it. All right, Let's do it. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, here we go. Uh, chapter Ezra, chapter eight, verse one. Here is the list of the family leaders. Oh, that's why you want me to read. And the geneal the genealogies of who of those who came from me excuse me, of those who came with me from Babylon during the reign of King Artaxerxes. I could read it if you want. No, no, it's just great. Sure. Yeah. From the family of Phineas, Gershom. From the family of Ithamar, Daniel. From the family of David, Hutush, Hatush, a descendant of Shekaniah. From the family of Par- Parash, Zechariah, and 150 other men were registered. And from the family of Parhoth, Moab, um, Eli Hoenaiah, Hoenai, son of Zariah, and 200 other men. From the family of Zatu, uh, Shekaniah, son of Yahaziel, and 300 other men. From the family of Aden, Ebed, son of Jonathan, and 50 other men. From the family of Elam, or Elam, uh, Yeshaya, son of Ethiala, and 70 other men from the family of Shephathia, uh, Zebediah, son of Michael, and 80 other men. From the family of Joab, Obadiah, son of Jehiel, and 218 other men. From the family of Benai, Shalomith, son of Jesiphia, and 160 other men. From the family of Be- Bebiah, Bebi, Zechariah, son of Babai, and 28 other men. From the family of Asgad, Johanan, son of Katan, and 110 other men. From the family of Adonikim, who came later, Eliphethelet, Jeul, Shemaiah, and 60 other men. From the family of Bigvai, Uthai, Zakur, and 70 other men. I assembled these exiles at the at the Ehava Canal, and we camped there 
for three days while I went over the lists of the people and the priests who had arrived. I found that not one Levite had volunteered to come along. Not one. We should for, go to this uh, when we go to Israel. The Ahava Canal. Can Ahava Canal. Trip? Maybe. Maybe so. Screenshot that, Brian. Let's maybe, try to that. maybe it's the... Uh, Maybe it's last on our list. We'll see. Yeah. Um, so I sent Eliezer, Ariel. What? I'm saying, come on, Levite. Someone stand up. <laughs> right? Uh, well, we'll see, right? So I, I sent Eliezer, Ariel, Shemaiah, and El Nathan, uh, Jerib, El Nathan, Nathan, Zechariah, and Meshulam, who were leaders of the people. I also sent for Joireb. El Nathan and who were men of discernment. I sent them to Idud, the leader of the Levites at Keshifia, to ask him and his relatives and the temple servants to send us ministers for the temple of God at Jerusalem. Since the, since the gracious hand of our Lord was on us, they sent us a man named Sherebiah, mm. along with 18 of his sons and brothers. He was a very astute man and a descendant of Mahali, who was a descendant of Levi, son of Israel. Mm. So also, they also sent Hashabiah, Hashabiah together with Yeshaya, yeah, Yeshaya, from the descendants of Marai, Marari and 12 of his sons and brothers 20. and 220 temple servants. Mm. The temple servants were assigned to the Levites, a group of temple workers first instituted by King David Great. and his officials. They were all listed by name. You know, what's really cool, too, here is that, like, when you see King David and the ink and Moses and things like that, you know, they never die because they're the Bible is living. And it's like, you know, you, you see, oh, hey, here's King David again. Like, he's already died, but like right. he's with us still. Right. How cool is that? Like he has like yep. eternal life, of course in heaven, but he also has eternal life with us right now in ink because the Bible is actually well. Brief. They always they reference him back as a like the descendant of this right. guy David and, and Levi. By the way, we're not going to the canal at Havai, Hava because it's over in Babylon, Iraq. <laughs> oh, so they assembled there. You're welcome to go, John, but that's not a good place. Why? Do you think it's dangerous? Yeah, you can't get into Iraq these days. Yeah. Dude, that's the <laughs> Taliban and everybody lives in this area, northern and southern uh, Babylon. We have God. Let's go. Because we're going to go into Iraq. I want to I want to go. What did he say? Also be wise as a serpent? <laughs> yeah, Mosul's right. the city. That's Nineveh. Yeah. Let's <laughs> not go there. Let's not go there. What's Nineveh today? I can't remember. Mosul. Oh, yeah. That's not. Yeah. You don't want to go there. Inside it. You can still see it. So, oh boy, yeah, we'll we'll pass on that for the yeah. trip. <laughs> yeah, it's a hard place to go. We'll stick to the Wailing Wall. <laughs> right. no, exactly. It's time. The Hava. Uh, I'll read it one more. And thereby, and there by the Ahava Canal, I gave orders for all of us to fast and humble ourselves before our God. We prayed that He would give us a safe journey and protect us, our children, and our goods as we traveled. Of course, it's a long journey from the Ahava Canal, all the way to Jerusalem. Yeah. There's something very peaceful yeah. about Ezra. I, I feel yeah. just a certain, he's so grounded. Like, I feel like when he talks, he's yeah. very just calm. Yeah. I don't know. I feel a very good peace with him. You, you yeah. might be hearing my voice right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting how you could Ezra feel. Sounds like Brian. Has... You're, I get you. I get what you're it, saying, though. Feel the personalities right. of these. Just the way people. it's written, it's yeah. very. He's yeah. very. You can. Yeah. 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 This guy. It seems like he. He's. He has a. His heart is is aimed toward God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's a certainty in his actions. Mm. He's not. He's not over embellishing. He's just saying we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. Yeah. We're gonna do it very way. precise. You know. You see King yeah. David. You know. He's. Yeah. He had some ups and downs. Right. I mean, you can see there was some turmoil and struggling. And of mm -hmm. course, guys like Saul and like you know there was the Moses with the arguing with the Lord and all. Yeah. You know. And yeah. you know, I, not coming at all those guys, but I'm just yeah. saying like with Ezra. And of course, we got to finish because we always see sin in everybody, which is sure. which is great because yeah. it points to Jesus being perfect. Absolutely. But you're right. Ezra seems very just like precise. Yeah. Yeah. You know, 
you know, Samson's probably the biggest one who's yeah. was just kind of like, I don't, Lord, forgive me for saying this, but kind of a mess a little bit, yeah. like in his prideful way. Oh, he was selfish, 100%. And then, and, but he was just so strong yeah. and God loved him and he loved God, but he oh, was yeah. just like that pro athlete that signed that contract mm-hmm. and he was kind of just like, mm-hmm. you know. That, that's actually one of the things that I think is so amazing about Scripture is you find every kind of person in Scripture. Mm. So, I mean, you got people who are action-oriented people who are go, go, go. You got people who are thinkers. You got people who are, you know, there's all these different. So no matter who you are, yeah. you can find in Scripture that personality. Right. You know, I mean, if you look at the disciples, yeah, the disciples are, are a myriad of personalities. You know, you've got mm. Thomas, who's the... Who's the questioner? I'm going to think about this. I need to understand it. And you got yep. Peter, like, who cares? Let's jump, you know? Uh, right. Like, you know, uh, 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 water from the hands. Um, Gideon. 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 Yeah. You know, he was like, yeah. okay, Lord, show me again. Yeah. I need yeah, another I need sign. Fleece, like, the fleece. Oh, yeah. Gideon. Yeah. 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 You know, but that's like, that. But, but there's people see, like that. What's cool, even like with Thomas, you know, Gideon and Thomas, God doesn't, God doesn't hammer on them for that. Mm-hmm. You think you would. Like, don't you trust me? But he knows their personality. He knows how they've been made right? Yeah. and understands that. So like with Thomas, when Jesus approaches Thomas after he's doubted, you know, that Jesus is alive. Have I met Thomas yet? Yeah, yeah. He's, okay. a, he's, a, he's an apostle. And right. you're gonna New meet, Testament. Yeah, okay. you're going to meet him there. But when, you know, when, when they tell him Jesus is alive, he's like, I don't believe it. You have to show me. Oh, wow. I need to show me. Right. You know? So a little like Gideon. Oh, absolutely. He's 100% that way. And then Jesus shows up in the room. Oh, and, wow. and instead of like going, you know what? You stink. You don't believe it. He's like, Thomas, come here. Yeah. Put your hands in my hand. Mm-hmm. Feel. Oh Put wow. Put your hand in oh, my Oh, this side. is after Feel Jesus it. died. Yeah, this is after his resurrected body. Oh and he's my like, gosh. And he's the person he invites to touch him because he knows Thomas. Mm-hmm. He's not doubting Jesus. Thomas is like, I just can't believe this. And he's like, I know you need proof. Come touch me. That's right. John, you need to get to the New Testament. Now you're yeah. talking about it right now. See, oh. in 2022, you're yeah. talking about it on oh. this mic. Thomas is... Because oh, it's gosh. continuing on. Yeah, because he's known mm-hmm. as... I know. Thomas, Ryan, we're, hate. we're rolling. You know? I mean, we're almost halfway through the Bible. Oh, man. I'm telling you. Thomas we're go- is yeah. fantastic. We're doing good. Yeah. I, I have a feeling... All these... Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. No, go, Brian. No, but you're right. There's so many characters. Like, I... I was just going to say, I have a feeling like we get to the Psalms and the Proverbs, we might slow down a little bit, but the characters in the Bible are just like us. We All three of us are so different, you know, oh, absolutely. John, that Chris, and myself. And and so, yeah, it makes it work. It makes, because you're so much different. We see things from different angles and yet we, we hold each other's arms and we walk forward and that's okay. And that's how it's supposed to work. You know, the 12, the 12 disciples that were close to the Lord, I mean, they weren't the yeah. same, you know? That's right. And so right. that's that's the beautiful thing about this, this journey. Yeah. And where I'm blind, John walks me. And where Brian's blind, I walk Brian. And where, you know, where you're blind, Brian walks you. Right. Exactly. And we take each other's hand. And we go, look, I can't see that. Okay, but I can. Let's move. No, you, yeah. yeah you, you bring up all these points, uh, John, sometimes like where, you know, all these, all the sin in everyone's life points back to Jesus as being perfect. Like, I've never thought about that. Like, right. of course I know he's perfect. Yeah, totally but, perfect. you know. It, you know what? It, so all these little things that you say, I I wouldn't think of, and uh, I say things that you didn't see, and it's great. And Chris, vice versa, as questions, I'm like, no, I never would have thought to ask that. Yeah, you know, I've learned a lot from you guys, tons. Well, that's why can... that's why he doesn't want us to be the same. Like even though like uh, like this whole these religions that you know everybody's got to look the same and act the same and be quiet and say the same prayers and chants over and over. That's wrong. I mean, God is not like that he he wants every individual to express himself mm. the way god put it in him like he gave you something that that everybody doesn't have he gave me like everything that you don't have and so on and we have similarities but yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know that's one thing i have against certain religion in the uh, that's big in the world and, and everybody says the same prayer yeah. After the same kind of thing every Sunday or Wednesday or Thursday night or Friday night. No, come on. That's silly. There are things that's good to do in unison because it's good. Now, yeah. like, there, there's sometimes like when we sing an old hymn or something once in a while in church and, and mm-hmm. they cut the music and you just, that's mm-hmm. like my favorite thing. Yeah. I don't even care what song it is, but to hear just the people singing the same words. Yeah. The same, oh, yeah. Or like, you know, if you, you've been to our church, we pray the Lord's Prayer every Sunday yeah. because that's part. I love it just to hear us all pray together. Yeah. You know, you should do that for your Sunday service. Yeah. Well, we might, I might do yeah. that. I might do that. Yeah. Shot, mix them up a little bit. Mix them yeah, up. It is. A, it, 
it's, right now, which yeah, is I'm good. already mixing up. Which is good. I can't wait, by the way, Sunday. Oh, yeah, good. I think it'll be cool Yeah, to finish sermon. Yeah. It is cool when people do everything together in unison, only the voices. Right. Powerful moment, no matter what it is. Right. But to do it out of rote, that's, uh, that's where I agree with you, Brian. Just to do it. Because Repetition. We, yeah. That's, yeah, I don't like that. I like to do it because it means something. There's, yeah, there's no power in it when you just do it. Do you want to. Yeah. You get to, you want to. Yeah. yeah. Well, so like when our pastor sends, he's like, hey, let's pray the Lord's Prayer together in full voice. Let's, you know, he's like, shout yeah. it out, do whatever, because he, he wants people to really pray it, not just follow along. Yeah. You know. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Where, where are we at here? 22. Almost. Uh, yeah. Let me read the rest and then we'll, Chris, you can take over. Or I was ashamed to ask the king of soldiers and horsemen to accompany us and protect us from the enemies along the way. After all, we had told the king our God's hand of protection is on all who worship him, but his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him. So we fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and he heard our prayer. And yeah, look at that too right there. Wow. But his fierce anger rages against those who abandon him. Him. Yeah. Yeah, don't yeah. do that. John doesn't abandon we, anybody. Yeah, we do the abandon. We abandon sure. him. And yeah, guess yeah. what? When it says God uh mm -hmm. anger, yeah. yeah, God has emotion. Yeah. What oh, do you think yeah. your emotion comes How do you from? get <laughs> right? You don't think you invented Stop that. Stop right? thinking God is up there in heaven right now, just like I <laughs> yeah. am God. I was talking about earlier about humor. Like you a robot get... floating on a cloud. Yeah, that's God given. Right. Mm -hmm. Humor's given, you know. Yeah, I agree completely. God and and, and you know, so that's interesting you say that, talking about how we abandon God. Because, you know, the, the sermon that I started two weeks ago mm -hmm. was about God's invitation to us, right? Right, yeah, And that's yeah. what I'm going to put on push on tomorrow is when we get to the Great Commission, yeah. Jesus comes to the disciples. He doesn't wait for them to come to him. Mm -hmm. He goes to them. And yeah. he says, I'm inviting you to walk with me. Yep. So we push away and abandon. God always invites. Yeah. Come with me. Yeah. yeah. Reminds me of a song where it says he, he chases us down. Just kidding. Well, yeah. Hold he on. does. I I'm it. just kidding, Chris. Reckless love, man. <laughs> no, no, I'm just Not kidding. Now. That's what I... it says. Oh. He chases us down. That's oh. one of the lyrics. It's God, just a joke. Right here. I'll use the restroom. Listen, I just a joke. Just a joke. And you know what? I don't nice, think. I don't think. Was, I don't think good... Jesus would be mad at me if I did use the restroom. He's fine. <laughs> he he loves you no matter what. Get what my heart's are. I think, he, but if you're singing it and, you, and it's, your heart's in the right place, I don't think he's going to be mad either. But yeah. I don't think yeah, God yeah, would yeah. be mad if I used the restroom and walked out. Uh, That's between like, you and God. I can't judge that. Talking about this one, Brian. Rescue. No, Lauren Tegel. Oh, yeah. Mm. There is no distance. Wait, hold on. Let's get to the chorus here. So good. Yeah. I hear the. Yeah, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Too, yeah. like um like if you you know and this and this goes for dudes too but i all her clothes she wears mm -hmm. it's just very like humble yeah you know yeah. it's it's you know it's very modest yeah you know yeah. she's like the christian adele right <laughs> she is yeah she is yeah all right let's continue 24 go ahead chris if you want sure. okay uh 24 uh, i appointed 12 leaders so wait so hang on before we go there 22 Notice they fasted. They, mm -hmm. they said that earlier they were going to fast. They fasted and earnestly prayed that our God would take care of us, and he heard our prayer. So mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to point that out real quick. They fasted and prayed, and they waited on God, and he answered. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't just, hey, we, we did this thing, and now we're going. You know, mm -hmm. They waited on him, and he uh, answered. And, and again, it, it, going back to that with Ezra, there's this a certain patience and peace right. with him. Right. Where he's kind of like almost almost – this is going to sound weird, but almost kind of like on the hippie side, right. you know, where he's more like, let's sit. He's <laughs> well, you, you notice the what? By the word, and let's pray and not eat. You know what I mean? Well, you notice that he just has he just has constant uh, confidence in God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It's not wavered. It's not back and forth. Oh Lord, if you will, it's I believe I earnestly uh, seek you. You're gonna follow. You're gonna take care of us. Your your enemies will will, uh, will be destroyed. You'll go before us. Like he has this constant, you know, faith in in God. Absolutely. And I was I was doing the the math on it when you were reading earlier. It looks like about fifteen hundred men are going with him. Mm. So wow. that's the men only. But about fifteen hundred are going back. Yeah. I don't know how many. Um, I don't know how many uh, um, 
Oh, I lost the guy's name. The guy who's already there. The leader who's there. Zerubbabel? Yeah. Mm. I don't know how many he had, but that, they're taking 1,500 back. So the, after God answers the prayer in verse 23, verse 24. Yeah, because Caleb, Caleb would have said, he would have drawn a sword and said, let's go fight. Yeah. We got God. Right. And then Ezra's like, let's fast for 24 hours. We're going to see God first. <laughs> yeah. Fine. I want to search. Yeah, then no. we go fight. Oh, okay. <laughs> Caleb's like, all right, fine, right, fine, right, right. fine. <laughs> Put your sword down, Joshua. Right. Or Joshua. Yeah, right. very methodical. Good point. Exactly. That is a good point. Uh, okay. Uh, verse 24. I appointed 12 leaders of the priests, uh, Sherebiah, Hashabiah, and 10 other priests to be in charge of transporting the silver, the gold, the gold bowls, and the other items that the king, his council, his officials, and all the people of Israel had presented for the temple of God. I weighed the treasure as I gave it to them and found the totals to be as follows. Here's that precision again. Here he is. Got a lot 20 of mm -hmm. tons of silver, mm. 7,500 pounds of silver articles, 7,500 pounds of gold, 20 gold bowls equal in value to 1,000 gold coins, two fine articles of polished bronze as precious as gold. Mm. And I said to these priests, you and these treasures have been set apart as holy to the Lord. This silver and gold is a voluntary offering to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. Guard these treasures well until you present them to the leading priests, the yes. Levites, and the leaders of Israel who will weigh them at the storerooms of the Lord's temple in Jerusalem. Mm. So they're, they're supposed to guard them across this entire track. Wow. Yeah, there it is. Look, on my screen right here. This is a long way. A long way. So if you get, if you, get you know... Robbers on you. It's you defend this with your life right here. See, see Baghdad. This is where they're starting in this area. We R can't see it. I think your screen's for. There we oh, go. There you go. There yeah, go. that's it. Yeah, see that. Yeah. So like, here, let me let me show you this. So this is Baghdad. Yeah, right north of Baghdad in this area, bald. Right. This is the uh, crossing area mm -hmm. right here. Right. right. And so then they have to literally go all the way through all this. This is Persia. Right, all this area right here in northern area, Syria, Persia, and then down to Jerusalem. So that is a long way in the wilderness. Yeah, they don't go straight across because that's desert. Desert. Yeah, so they'll go. Yeah, Fertile Crescent, way up here, way up into the into, yeah, Assyria and Syria, yeah, and then down through Lebanon. Right in the so, Syria. God is so precise because you know right now um, the king of Persia is on our side, of course. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about them. No. Right. No, so he's making, stuff. he's making, yeah. you, you just see God's plan work yeah. and how everything connects. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know, cause when Brian's got to go through Persia, like, uh -huh. well, before this time, that probably would be a no. Oh yeah. But now because the King of Persia is on our side, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, we can go through here. Yeah. It's like, it's just perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So they're, they're, he sets these guys like, you're guarding this. You're responsible for this. The people of God and the, and the other people, God has commanded these things to be given, guard them. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, there was, you're right. There is no way without God, this would ever happen. First day he released the people. He gave them stuff to go build the mm -hmm. temple. And we forget people die all the time from traveling because of, of right. bandits and murderers and thieves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But now they have, uh, basically the protection of the King yeah. and of course, God, yeah. Almighty. God for him. So, yeah. Good point. That's a good point, John. Oh, thanks. Okay, so I lost where we were. 30. 30. 30. 30. Yep. So the priests and the Levites accepted the task of transporting these treasures of silver and gold to the temple of our God in Jerusalem. 31, he, we broke camp at the Hava Canal on April 19th, look at that, and started off to Jerusalem. And the gracious hand of our God protected us and saved us from the enemies and bandits along the way. So we are enemies and bandits. See, he even protected yeah, well, there us. There it is. It's literally like that. said that word brian yeah mm -hmm. so we arrived safely in jerusalem where we rested for three days here's hey, what you ought to pick up John. brian oh thank you <clears throat> we started this journey cover to cover april 12th these guys started april oh, 19th Oh, nice. i'm just saying i don't think it's a coincidence <laughs> we started this on pretty much the same time yeah yeah very cool look at that look at that 33 on the fourth day after our arrival the silver gold and other valuables were weighed at the temple of our god at um and entrusted to Merimoth, son of Uri, uh, Uriah, Uriah the priest, yeah. and to Eleazar, son of 
Phineas. Phineas. Phineas, yeah. Phineas, Phineas along Phineas. with Josabad, son of Jeshua. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeshua. Mm-hmm. And Noadiah, son of Beniu, both of whom were Levites. Everything was accounted for by number and weight, and the total weight was officially recorded, 35. Then the exiles who had come out of captivity sacrificed burnt offerings to the God of Israel. They presented 12 bulls for all the people of Israel, as well as 96 rams and 77 male lambs. They also offered 12 male goats as a sin offering. All this was given as a burnt offering to the Lord. The king's decrees were delivered to his highest officers and the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, who then uh, cooperated Mm -hmm. uh, by supporting the people and the temple of God. Mm -hmm. Everything the king said. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, there wow. it is. I, I got to go here in like the next two minutes. Yeah. Um, so we'll kind of put a bow on this and pray it out. Yeah. But great chapter. Yeah. Great chapter. Yeah. They're yeah. back. Everyone is back. Yep. They're back. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So... Oh, jeez. Sorry. <laughs> Lost the light. <laughs> yeah. My light fell down. Uh, the enemy's attacking us. <laughs> yeah. So. so next, next, uh, next time we're gonna read about intermarriage and why why they stay pure before the Lord with marrying uh, Israelites mm-hmm. yep. and and so on. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. Well, um, Brian or Chris, you want to pray it out? Oh yeah. no, you prayed it in. Yeah, I'll, I'll pray it out. Okay. Yeah, John, you do it. Yeah. Dear God, thank you for looking over Sherry on her recovery from surgery. Um, you know, thank you for looking over uh, Paul Adams as he uh, as, a, as a soldier uh, mm-hmm. doing traveling right now as Meg is home with the kids. Uh, you know, thank you for looking over Chris Willingham as he continues his journey that you have for him on his next pastoral um, job and setup. Um, thank you for for keeping uh, us safe, uh, me and Brian and our families and looking over us. We love you. Thank you for your word. Uh, wow. Thank you for making Ezra what a man Ezra is. I cannot wait to meet him one day. I'm learning so much from him. Uh, his stability, his peace, his direction, his leadership, his love for you, his preciseness. Um, he just, I, I, I could be, I could be more like Ezra. Uh, and most importantly, I could be more like Jesus. Mm. So the strength to Stay away from sin, keep my sword sharp, walk side by side with Jesus, understanding we cannot be perfect, but golly gee, we're going to try, Lord, every single day. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, amen. amen. That's right. <laughs> perfect. Yeah. All right. Any last words? No, not really. Good. Good conversations. Now, welcome home, everybody. Welcome home. That's right. Yeah, we're back. We're mm-hmm. back. Yep, we're second back. temple is built. Yeah, we're back. The haters, they're, we got rid of them. They're sacrificing. They're yep. they're doing all the things they need to do to get get them back. Persia's being nice still. Kings are good there. Ezra's yeah. leading. We, we got fasted. one more leader to get there. We got one more leader to arrive, and we'll be there. Yep. Now Nehemiah's that we fasted, oh, we're on Nehemiah next. Yeah, Nehemiah's got to come in. Yeah, he's the next leader to come in. Okay, he's going to complete the system. Got it. Yeah, got it. Yeah. The good news is, like, the temple is the second temple built. Yeah, that's right. You know, and so uh, Jesus was hung around the second temple. So hopefully this thing stands for a long time mm. and no invaders. We'll see lots of stuff to happen. Go watch John Q and don't listen to reckless love. <laughs> we <laughs> Recap. That's a mini recap. Yeah, that's great. Uh, All right, everybody. Well, uh, Chris Willingham, always a pleasure. Uh, always a pleasure. So far. Yeah. Thanks for having me guys. Yeah, no problem guys. We'll see you guys. Uh, oh, we might be live Monday. Somewhere else. Yep. Yeah. Well, oh, we will right. be live. Will yeah, be yeah. Live. City Church. Yeah. City nice. Church. We'll do a we'll do a big social media plug on that. Yeah, I'll be watching. Day. Yeah, I'll definitely be watching. Okay, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Salute. I will send out.